As I said, Simon Brown here, we're doing this evening's presentation. It's going to be a relatively short presentation because it's five points to it. Um, perhaps more important than that is that really what we're doing here is, is, is giving you things to think about around trading as a concept rather than the, the typical response which people have to trading, which is yeah, moving average crossover next by. To think trading more holistically, to think about trading the extra components that it is uh, and that is coming through and that's critically important that we need to think about is really what we're looking to focus on this evening. So as I said, relatively short presentation, probably 15 or 20 minutes. In truth, I often struggle to keep short. We'll see how that goes. Why are traders? Because trading is more than just a chart. And, and that's, as I said in the intro there a moment ago, it's important that we understand there's a lot to trading um, and, and we tend to focus on the buy signal, we tend to focus on the profit or the loss, and there's a lot of other auxiliary sort of stuff that we need to focus on to make that complete process to, to really make trading uh, fulfilling. And I mean fulfilling from a, a success point of view. And that, to the point, it's much like a business. And, and this is a point I often make around trading, where we're going to look at trading and say, this is a business. And, and there are a lot of similarities between trading and, and, and starting your own business, uh, risk of failure, things to learn, steep learning curves, costs involved, etc., uh, etc. Et so really it's that, that broader part. It's, it's knowing what's important and it's making sure that we have all those different components. Now, I'm going to touch on five of them this evening. I'm not going to pretend it's a complete list. It certainly is an important part of it. Uh, as I said, to get you on that journey, to start you going down, I remember when I first saw this, it was actually put together by my then partner at uh, SA Warrens, Munford Harbeck. Uh, and he sent me a, a trader's matrix, and for me it just set off all sorts of bells ringing, made a whole lot of sense for me, and I think certainly helped a long way to making me ultimately a better trader. That is the matrix. The five parts we need to, to look at to focus on, uh, goals, discipline, money management, that's the MM, resources, and ultimately a system that will lead us to success. I'm going to delve into each one in a little more detail. I think the one that we probably always know to focus on is the system. Uh, I think we probably think that goals is to get incredibly rich in a short period of time. Uh, discipline, uh, I think that's probably the one area which we probably are weak on. Money management and then of course resources, that's capital, but it's more than just that capital part and we'll delve into each of them in some detail. Goals, if we don't have goals, we quite simply have confusion, and that's quite simply because if we don't know where we're going, well then where are we going and who's driving your bus? It's important to know why you're trading. And obviously we're ultimately trading to make money, but we need to focus away from the money. We need to say, you know, what are we trying to do? What are we looking to have achieved in a one-year time frame, three-year, five-year, ten-year? Are we looking for, for uh, uh, early retirement to pay kids school fees? Are we looking to supplement retirement? What is the logic behind it? And then to build it back. If you want a billion dollars in five years and you're starting with a, a thousand rand, crunch those numbers and see what sort of returns you have to do and then frankly ask yourself honestly if this really is something that's possible. Goals also enable us to measure success and it's very critical that within, in trading environments success is, is not about making money. Trading is about that discipline, trading is about consistency, trading is about working out an edge and trading that edge. That edge could be an engulfing candle as I use in trading Aussie futures, it could be moving average crossovers, it could be a lot more complicated, but it enables us to measure that success and we come back to that point, so I'll park it there for now. And it's those targets, it's discipline targets. What I look for when I do a trade, and I exclude my intraday trading, when I do a trade I rank it at a seven, I've got seven questions I ask myself and I say, did I adhere to those seven things? For example, did I wait for confirmation? Did I properly set my stop loss? Did I exit correctly? Did I trade the right quantities, etc.? No point to ask myself about did I make money or not. But what I'm looking for is to consistently get seven out of seven for those trades. And, and then I'm showing that discipline. And, that, and that's one of my goals. So the, the discipline very much fits into it. 
It's also knowledge targets, understanding products. You, you want to trade uncorrelated products. So you want to trade uh, corn and Aussie futures and oil, perhaps. Maybe throw gold into the equation. So you've got to go and learn about, about the underlines. You've got to also learn about the products that you're trading. So there's a lot of stuff in that sort of space. You've got to go learn about risk management, etc. And then also experience targets. In other words, as you get better, as you get more experienced. So it really is setting out a lot of goals. The important point with goals is they need to be written down. You need to get a piece of paper, uh, stick up those goals next to your desk somewhere, have them bold, have them present, make them real to yourself, and, and, and broadly, the why. What are you trying to achieve, and how are you going to achieve it? Remember that we might have a goal which is a, a long-term goal, a five- or ten-year goal, and we focus on that. In truth, that ten-year goal is going to be made up of, of, of hundreds, maybe thousands of bite-sized chunks, tiny little things. I remember when I started trading all the futures, I said, well, great, I want to be able to make you know, I don't know, 50,000 points a year. Okay, but my first goal was to make uh, 500 points in a month. Then it was 1,000 points and slowly build up. So that big picture goal which we have far down in the horizon is actually made up of lots of little bite-sized goals which are achievable and which are manageable. And it comes to who's driving your bus. If you don't have goals, where are you going? Somebody else is driving the bus, and frankly, you're going to their destination. It's important that you understand why and where and how so that ultimately you can be the person driving your bus. As I said, without goals, you have confusion. You have no measurables. You're going nowhere. You're wandering around in circles and, frankly, achieving nothing. Discipline. Discipline. Without it, you have inconsistency. Discipline is, is absolutely important. When people say to me, what is the, you know, what's a good trader in a word? To me, in one word, it's about that discipline. It's discipline of the mind. It's consistency of action. It's discipline of the trading structure. Absolutely critical aspect of trading. And what it does is it enables measurability of the system. What I mean by that, for example, my engulfing candle on the Aussie futures had a brilliant June until Tuesday of last week. Last three days of, of, of the trading month were terrible, and the first two days of the, of the new trading month have been terrible. I've had five days of, of horrid trading. But what I'm comfortable with is I can measure that system. I, I've been trading it for a protracted period of time. I know that it works. I also know that it will give me runs of losing trades. I'm happy with that because I... Having had that discipline, I know that the system works over time and therefore can give me trust in that system and it will ensure repeatable success. We need to have that discipline. We need to, if this is why we trade, or rather how we trade, if we trade on a moving average crossover, we wait for that moving average crossover and we only trade that moving average crossover and we wait for confirmation. And we trade the right amount in terms of risk size. And we constantly do the same thing again and again and again. And what that means is that after a while of trading it, we know that it works. So we can trust it when things go horrible. And we can do it blindly almost in a sense. I, I just enter trades. No second thought. I see the signal. It confirms. I click, click. I'm in that trade. There's absolutely no thought to it. It's that paramount discipline. And you know, People say to me, well, what makes a good trader? It is always about that discipline. It's, trading is about discipline. If you don't have it, you'll, you, you won't succeed at trading. And what's critically important, and this is something I've been picking up a lot lately, is folks who trade a multiple of different charting patterns. If you want to trade double tops and rising wedges and head and shoulders, Understand that what you have there is three different trading systems. Each one must be treated differently, must be traded in their own respect, and each one must again be traded with that discipline. Now, in truth, you set up the rules, and that's often a bit of a chicken and egg scenario, and I'm going to do some webinars on that. But if you don't have discipline, you won't have consistency, you won't have trust, you won't have success. Money management. Uh, money management is, frankly, managing your risk. If you don't have it, you have anxiety. And why do you have that anxiety? Without money management, you don't know how much you're going to lose in any one particular trade. You're worried that your system might go bankrupt in a couple of losing trades and the like. Money management is about that trade size, which is the 2% and the 6% rule. 
there are some short URLs on the screen there. If you go to those URLs, you will find webinars that we have done on each of those two different rules. And what it does is that when I go into a trade, I know exactly what my potential loss is in RAND terms. I know that if this goes horribly wrong, I'm going to lose 50 points. I'm trading so many contracts, that's X RAND value. Put uh, uh, costs on top, add some slippage, this is what I can lose. It gives me that confidence. It gives me that comfort that I know what's going to happen. It's your stop loss position. It's also stop loss management. And, and I think you know, where to position the stop loss and how much to trade, I think those are fairly simple. Managing a stop loss is a whole lot more complicated. In other words, do you set an automatic stop loss? Uh, do you trust the systems? That, and, and that depends on what systems your broker offers you. Depends what you're trading. In Aussie futures, automatic stop loss works an absolute treat. In an illiquid small cap, uh, automatic stop loss is going to kill you just because of the lack of liquidity. <clears throat> so stop loss is critical to a trader, and that, that is your money management. That says, you know, how much do I trade? My 2% rule says, if I'm going into a trade, it tells me how many shares to buy. In the olden days, I would just go and buy X RAND value. It says, well, where's your entry? Where's your X potential stop loss? Therefore, here's your risk. Therefore, here's how much you go and trade. So it reduces stress. If that loss is known, that loss is manageable, means no anxiety, no stress, and it means we can trade with comfort. And money management coupled with discipline means that you can trade in that zone. It means you can trade in a comfortable space without worrying, without having to check the markets all the time, without stressing that if things go horribly wrong, this could be the end of the deal. Resources. Simply, if you don't have the resources you need to trade, you're going to, have, you're going to be frustrated. It's like trying to start a pizza parlor, and you could sell thousands of pizzas, but you don't have enough money to buy the dough, and, and therefore frustrated at the possibilities. So that first part is portfolio size. How much money do you need to trade with? Now, to me, the short answer is 100,000. Uh, people like Garth McKenzie will say the short answer is 50,000. So let's split it and say somewhere between 50 and 100 is a good size portfolio for a trader. I'm distinct as this from investing. In truth, you know, someone said to me the other day, I've only got 18,000. It's going to take me some time to get to a, a decent size portfolio. But they want to start trading now with that 18,000 so that they gain experience, so that they can build their discipline, they can build their knowledge. And that's a fair point. The analogy I use is one I took from Alexander Elder, who refers to portfolio size like an airplane. The smaller the portfolio, the closer you are flying to the treetops. And the closer you're flying to the treetops, the higher that risk of something going wrong, that will wipe you out. Now, if you're at treetop level and there's a bird strike or one tree that's two feet taller than another one, that's it. it you're a ball of flames. If you're at 30,000 feet, well, there are no birds, there are no you know, tall trees, and if you have a, a black swan event, it might be a very painful in terms of financial situation, but it's not going to be a game-changing, a game-ending scenario. So it really is two smaller portfolios crippling. Ideal to me is 50 to 100. Can you start with smaller? Sure, but starting with smaller certainly puts you back against the wall. That's critically important to understand. It's also about the tools that you need. In other words, intraday charts and those sort of things. Critically important that tools do not make the trader. And that also comes to my next point, which is about the data that we need. Again, data doesn't make the trader. Discipline is. These are tools. What we've got to make sure that we only have the data and the tools that we actually need. These are expenses. If you, you know, Bloomberg is a brilliant system. I recommend it to everyone. Except it costs two, two and a half thousand dollars per month. I mean, is that fundamental overkill? Absolutely it is. So typically I say to folks, you know what? Go and find what you need. Go find those bare minimums that you can get by on. Because if you're paying a hundred bucks for something you don't really use, that's a thousand two hundred a year, that's twelve thousand over a decade, that's a lot of wine. That's a lot of money that you're, in essence, throwing away and not using for any real benefit. The system, I think the system is probably the part that everyone focuses the most on. This is where they put the vast amount of time and effort. The system being that sing signal generation process. Whatever it is, 
that you do that gives you buy and sell signals. And we tend to spend all of our time on the system. And that's fair, but to my mind, systems should be simple. They should be easy and really, and they're a part of the process. They're a part of the matrix. They fit with everything else. If you've got a system, but you've got nothing else, you're going nowhere. If you've got everything else but the end of the system, you're going to be completely lost. You're going to have no structure. You're going to have no potential success. So that's typically in trading going to be your chart setup, your buy, your sell signals, and how you do that. Up to yeah, Everyone has their own different way. I'm not sure there's a necessarily a right or a wrong, but it's going to tell you what to trade and when to trade. Your money management will then tell you how much to trade. Your discipline will ensure that you get in at the right part and the resources will keep you in the game. You need to trust the system, and that comes with discipline because that breeds consistency, that breeds something which is measurable, so that trust is very important, and as I always say, keep it simple. The system needs to be simple. It needs to be something which is easily explained to people, not something that's going to take you, you know, two hours to explain. You need to go to explain a system in a minute or two, and you need to understand that a system is just a part of that bigger picture. It's not the whole deal. It's not everything, the be-all and end-all. Just a part of that process. So that, folks, is the five components. Very short, very simple. Uh, it's about goals. It's about discipline. It's about money management, resources, and then ultimately, it's about having a system as well. And if you put those five together, you get that success. The risks... And truth, I, can't, I couldn't think of any. I always like to put a risk screen because you've got to say there's always some risk there. I couldn't, none, none came to mind. Um, anyone that really spun up is a bit of tongue in cheek. I suppose the risk is that you ignore the matrix, that you focus on one part or two parts or maybe three, but not the rest. Certainly, if you can throw any, I'll take them in a moment in questions. But to my mind, we absolutely need it. And that recap. And I want to go back to what I said at the beginning. The, the key part of this evening's presentation is to start you thinking about trading as much wider than just a chart with a moving average or an RSI or a stochastic, MACD, whatever you might use. That trading in itself is very much wider. There's a lot more to the process of trading. It comes to the point I made, treat trading as a business. Structure that entire process and get a grip on the five parts of the matrix. You might think some parts are a little more important. There might be a six or a seven or even an eighth part that you think you need to bring into your trading process. I'm not going to deny that in the least. As I said, this is a starting point on a journey. And to understand, trading is very much that journey. We, we, we've got a goal in mind. It's going to take us time. As I offer, I've, I've been trading 16 years. I've been successful for 11 and I think there's still stuff I can learn. I'm certainly not going to stand up and say, you know, I know it all, I'm, I'm you know, the, the, the absolute perfect trader. I think if I did that, the market would take me out in the knees in absolutely no time at all. Trading is massively rewarding, but it's something we need to get to. It's like any other skill. We need to learn it, we need to skill it, we need to understand there's a lot to learn, there's a lot of processes. A lot of that learning is internal more than just going and learning about what a, an Aussie future is. It's learning how we respond under pressure. It's learning how we respond to losses. In truth, it's also learning to, how we respond to winners. Fumani is asking, how would you split the 100,000? How many shares in 100,000? Uh, Fumani, great question. And I think you're kind of asking two questions. When you say shares, I think you might perhaps be talking investing. Uh, so I'm going to answer from an investing perspective, and then I'll move to a trading perspective. From an investing perspective, I would say if you've got 100,000, you could build yourself a portfolio of between five and eight shares. Research has shown that you ideally want somewhere between five and 12. Uh, if, if you start moving beyond 12, you're really just going to get beta. In other words, market performance. If you've got less than five, you've got far too much risk. So from an investment perspective, if you had 100,000, you could go and buy five, six, seven, eight shares at somewhere between 12 and 20,000 a share. The costs wouldn't be massively onerous, and that would work well. From a trading perspective, it really is that 2% rule. Uh, sometimes you might be getting into a trade where you're buying that share at 10 Rand, but your stop loss is 9 Rand 80. In other words, your risk is 20 cents, 
and the 2% rule says then you can go and buy 20,000 shares. Um, and in truth, you can't because, well, 20,000 shares will cost you 200,000. So let's make that less extreme. You're buying a 10 rand. The stop loss is 9 rand 50. 50 cents risk per share. You'll go and buy 4,000. That would then be 40,000 shares. So it's going to depend very much on where you enter and where that stop loss is. On a 100,000 portfolio, I would probably be, be comfortable trading somewhere around three or four different uh, whatever they are, whether they be indices or commodities or something like that. But and I don't, I wouldn't want to push it much beyond that. I, I currently trade four instruments. I trade Aussie futures intraday. I trade the Fini 15, Indy 25, and the Resi 20. In fact, now the Resi 10. I trade end of day. I would, as a trader, you're probably looking to trade no more than four, five, maybe six different products in total. Any more questions coming through? I'm seeing a question. Okay, Susan is asking. She says she's trading and she's finding it very tough. She's getting battered. She finds herself moving kind of her equity, uh, her equity curve goes sideways and then you know, kind of going nowhere and then suddenly a bad trade and it goes down. I asked Susan a couple of points. Firstly, been there, got the T-shirt and lost the T-shirt repeatedly. Um, if you're equity, if you're going sideways and then suddenly your equity curve takes a dive, the dive is probably because you're doing the occasional bad trade, and that's probably due to a lack of discipline more than anything else, not quite following the rules as much as you should be. If you're going sideways, it probably suggests that you're, you're trading fairly well. You know what you're doing, but you, you, you're kind of not getting that big winner. You're, you're not quite getting to that edge where your equity curve starts to move upwards rather than sideways. And what you're really looking for is to that point where you're almost trading unconsciously. We, we call it unconscious competence, where much like when you drive a car, you can drive a car uh, down the M1 or depending which city you're in, uh, N1, N3, I don't know, N4, uh, scattered all over the country this evening. You're driving it, you're not quite paying attention. You're, you're, you're listening to the radio or you're looking at something out the window or you're chatting to the person in the passenger seat but you're driving perfectly competently, but unconsciously. And to the point being is, is you've, you've thrown there, you've been in it for two years. I, I wouldn't despair. I would say shortly that two years is relatively short. Um, I spent five years losing. I think that was probably quite long. I think that a trade is probably, it's fair to expect to spend two or three years. I think your key point is to get rid of those, those trades which take your equity curve badly down. In other words, bring in that discipline. If you start focusing on that, if nothing else, that should start to see things moving a bit better. Thanks very much for attending. Uh, to go back to the point I made right up front, that the real purpose of the presentation this evening is to start to think about trading more broadly than just as a simple, we've got a chart, we've got a moving average. There's a lot more to it. Take that business analogy, understanding that trading is a, a, a process of many different parts that need to fit together, and we need to be master of them all. Thanks very much for your time this evening. Cheers.